Uh, hello, back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the League of Ireland podcast. That's myself, Paul Neal, and I'm joined by Peter Manning once again. And Peter has the facts and stats, and he's going to be going through them now. So I'll hand it over to you, Peter. Talk us through it. Right. Thank you. And obviously a very busy week just gone in the League of Ireland. Um, Rovers Dundalk was the big game of the weekend. Rovers came out of that game 1-0. Uh, Pico Lopez header. Um, then ro- moving on to Bowes Derry. Uh, the bit of a flood, uh, floodlight fiasco there. Game didn't kick off till I think half eight because lightning or something like that. That finished 2 all. Uh, I believe Cork. the weather in that one was horrendous as well. Uh, the one in, in Daily Mount. Yeah, some some about a lightning strike hitting a power station, which caused a power surge. Uh, uh, look yeah, at, I saw I the delay. It third. nearly got called off, but I did. I did see that the the rain was horrendous as well on Friday night. Yeah, I, I think um, there's a few games that it heavily affected, but um, as well as that, rolling on to Drada Cork, a uh, three-one win for Drada at home against Cork. Cork really just seeming like a broken record. I repeat at this moment, um, anytime they have a chance. To go on, push on, to just seem to throw it away. UCD Pats, um, Pats would only win the game by one 0 which I think surprised a lot of people. And it was actually a much closer game than a lot of people thought it would have been. And then on the Saturday, uh, Shells got a one 0 win over Sligo in the showgrounds. Look, did any of these results uh, surprise you? Um, I think the the Shamrock Rovers one was uh was a huge result. I think they they were due a big win, and that was the big win that they needed. Um, the Bowes one seemed like a a, a great game, an, an entertaining game. But I I do think um the Rovers one was a big result, and uh Shells getting the the away win um to Sligo as well was a big win as well. So otherwise pretty standard. It was nice to see. I think Rory Keaton scored uh four. Cork, so it's good to see him back on the score sheet. I think they, he scored last week in the cup as well. Um, it was good to see him back scoring goals. Um, I saw a celebration picture of him kind of down on his knees celebrating. So I was happy to see him get, having a little bit of joy considering all the um horrible uh the horrible situation he's been in lately. So um, I think if if Cork can find something positive out of that is the fact that he's still scoring goals and if he's still scoring goals then they still have a chance and I do think that if he's scoring goals coming into the end of the season that if it is to go to a playoff that they could be saved by the fact that he does score the goals and I do think whether they stay uh, actually did he sign a new contract there recently um, before the accident I think he did didn't he because teams I were looking at I think he had him. signed an extension there yeah yeah, because I was going to say that teams would probably come in for him, but if he's after being offered a contract, that would be interesting to see can Cork get a fee for him or whatever, because he's, in, he's definitely one of the better strikers in the League of Ireland. But a great result for Drogheda, um, all the same. And Kevin Doherty's performing miracles there every single week. Uh, regarding St. Pat's, standard for, for them to be beating UCD, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, uh, what about yourself? Did you Did you find anything surprising or was there just standard uh, League of Ireland um, to be honest it was, it was fairly predictable results in, in all honesty Derry did seem a bit in control of the game but um, like for most of the game until Diallo uh, threw away a penalty in, uh, at the uh, towards the end but um, yeah Pat's a bit of a tight one Drogheda Cork I would have thought Cork growing up early might have got something out of that game but Drogheda just seemed to you know dig in get the result out of it. Uh, I know Doherty was celebrating at the end uh, with the fans. They're pretty much almost guaranteed staying up at this point, I'd say. If UCD next week, you'd expect them to get something out of that. So I think Cork have Sligo next week. That might that might be their last chance to stay up. But beyond that, I think no real surprises. Yeah. Well, uh yeah, yeah, I suppose we won't waste any more time. We've got a, a podcast with Paddy Barrett. We'll get into it now, so you can check that out now. And we're delighted to be joined by Paddy Barrett. Um, I'm going to say all the way from North Dublin, but it's, it's probably just Dublin at this point, is it? Yeah, it's, uh, for right this second, it's, it's, it's Dublin. Obviously, I'm living up here, uh, but usually I'm all the way from Waterford, so but we'll take we'll take the Dublin bit. Yeah, for just for I don't know whether I'm uh, north or south. I'm I'm in Castle Knock, so north. I'll let you decide. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you're li- and you're living with uh, Mark Coyle. You said to us off air there, and he's on yeah, baby duty. Yeah, yeah. He's on baby 
baby duty at the minute, so that's why I'm. Uh, I got half hour off to have a chat with you. Yeah. Well, look, we we appreciate you coming on and having a chat with us. Uh, it's a big week in the League of Ireland, but we're going to get a, a a little kind of backstory on you. There might be some people listening to this who uh, who are not aware of who you are, and obviously there will be fans of yours that will be listening anyway. So I suppose um, not to go all the way back to your Dundalk days and stuff like that, but you 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 went on your loan to Waterford, you came back, and then you were off to America. Kind of tell us a bit about that experience, and then off the back of that coming uh, back to the League of Ireland? Yeah, I went um, I went over to America. I spent three years over in America. Um, I first signed with uh, FC Cincinnati in the USL, obviously the one lower than the MLS. And I signed a year there and I had a great year there. I uh, loved it over there. Now, I didn't know how, I didn't know first. I, I was never in America, so I just, off the bat, I just went over there and moved. Um, for the first couple of months, I was like, what have I done here? Um, <laughs> if, because I went over in the winter, it was minus 30, I think minus 38 degrees. Uh, so I was thinking, this is not for me. But then once the weather started picking up a little bit better, I started loving it over there. And I spent three years over there. I went up to Indy 11 in the same same league uh, for two years. And again, I loved it. I really enjoyed my time in America. Um, and then COVID obviously happened. Uh, over there, obviously, you play East and West leagues, and when COVID happened, they kind of ruined the whole league the way it was set up. Obviously, they changed the whole. I think it was from from two from two leagues into like eight different leagues, where you only play against the teams that are close to you, and less than five hours in a drive, and just all these different rules. So that kind of tore me off playing that extra year in America. So. Then I just decided, like, you know, I was kind of, I was kind of after enjoying my time in America, and I just wanted to kind of come home, really. Um, but at that time, then there was it was obviously COVID was at its highest point, and the League of Ireland wasn't up and running. So I was offered a chance then to just end up in Cambodia because that was going ahead. So I was like, why not? <laughs> uh, so on a flight from America, I went and over to Cambodia. Um, Cambodia wasn't obviously as enjoyable as America. Um, it didn't last long there. So uh, I was obviously, I think at the time it was Stevie O'Donnell, uh, the Pats manager reached out to me and was obviously interested in seeing if I was interested in coming back to play in the League of Ireland with Pats. And, you know, I kind of jumped at that. And, you know, I was very happy with my decision in the end. And, Obviously, it worked out very well for me going into Pats um, a I couple think, of years ago, and yeah. obviously, I think I think that was done well there. I think that was something Peter wanted to ask you. Was Stevie Stevie O'Donnell? You played with him. Uh, do you want to do you want to ask him there, Peter? Yeah, obviously, when you came back to Pats, Paddy, you was just kind of you did play alongside um, Stephen O'Donnell back at Dundalk. So, what was it like? You know, watching Stevie switch from a man you play beside to all of a sudden he's telling you what to do on the pitch, telling you how to run. Yeah, so look, when I when I played with him, he was telling me the same things. When I lived, I lived with him for three and a, three and a bit years as well. So he was still telling me what to do. But, um, you know, it was actually very weird. I thought it was very weird at the start. Um, it's just like, how do you speak to him? You know, obviously he's your manager. You speak to your manager differently than you would your mates. You know, and obviously he would have been my mate at the time. Um, so it was a, it was a very different kind of switch for me to kind of treat him as a manager rather than a friend. Um, but look, Stevie, Stevie is a type where he's kind of, he'll knock that on the head pretty pretty quickly. Um, and he lets you know he's your manager, you know. So uh, to be fair, I adapted well to it. And obviously he did as well. And, you know, obviously, as I said already, it's it was very weird. That was kind of probably the only word I have for it. It was weird. But then again, I, I adapted well to it. And obviously then 2021, you went on to have a great season with Pats, finished second, FA Cup final, uh, or sorry, FA Cup win. You know, want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, like obviously when I first went back to Pats, um, yeah, it was it was obviously different because I've, I've kind of, obviously I, when I was in the League of Ireland, I mostly played with Dundalk. That was where we achieved the best of the best, you know, up there um, that you can kind of as an Irish team. So it was a bit weird coming back and obviously then going into a team, a Pat's a different team than Dundalk was probably a little bit weird as well. But I kind of knew, knew a few of the lads from there. So 
it's a little bit easier. Um, and then obviously going into a, a good team where we had an unbelievable year that year. Um, obviously going on to win the win the FAI Cup um, was was unbelievable. And obviously, as you said, finishing second, we we ran uh, Shamrock Rovers probably the closest for the last few years. Um, but yeah, it was an unbelievable season. Obviously, Stevie and Padge, the, the staff and that at Pats, we had an unbelievable team. Obviously, a lot of it was broken up then when Stevie left at the time. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that year and yeah. felt probably it was one of my best years of playing football as well. And it was the happiest I was in the world. And then obviously last year, you know, uh, switch a manager and you had that injury. Did you, did you find it kind of difficult having to watch the games, you know, not be part like feel kind of almost left out of the games in that in that way with the injury. Yeah, look, it's 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 obviously it's hard when look it was a change of manager and you know I kind of I had options to go go elsewhere. Um, after my first year in Pats, obviously I was only after signing a one year deal and I had many options after that year because I've done so well. But you know I kind of want I stayed loyal to St Pats. Um, and because I had a, such a such a good year on and off the field. Um, in my first year in Pats, I wanted to stay there, so I did, you know. And then obviously the, the ma- changing the manager, I met Tim Clancy, and you know we kind of we spoke because um, because I've never got an injury before, you know. I was ready to go in in pre-season, and I was ready to ready to rock. And obviously pre-season started, and I start feeling probably an older injury that happened to me. I think it was the most I felt it was the week before the cup final. Um, and I thought the four weeks off would, I thought I had an osteitis pubis, um, but obviously that wasn't the case. Uh, I waited four weeks and I ended up having a double hernia. So um, the start obviously the year with Tim Clancy didn't go as well as I wanted to because, look, I'm a big lad and I need pre-season, you know what I mean? I need to be fit when I go into a season and I just couldn't get fit that year. Not that year, but at that time when he came in and, you know, I was kind of, when I was trying to get back to my fitness, um, I was picking up little niggles here and there, but it was never, I was never out for really a long period of time. It was like, you know, it was just kind of whatever way Tim kind of didn't favour me, didn't want me kind of involved as much as I probably would have liked him to be involved. I wasn't actually injured for that long. You know what I mean? I was out for, I was back probably fully fit, I'm going to say in June. Um, and still after that, I was never really in his plans and you know I was after signing a two year deal and coming to the end of that year I was like what's the point of me staying here if I'm not going to be playing I'm at an age I'm at an age in my career where I need to be playing week in week out and if the manager doesn't want me there then you know I'm going to kind of going to leave so it was like that was how the year went and you know I like to be honest it was I probably never even actually spoke about how I left Pats that time because you know it was never really Probably people said it was like kind of me pushing to get out and it wasn't that case. It was like I had a conversation with Tim and I was actually on holidays at this stage in December and I had a conversation with Tim about coming back pre-season. I met him in Dublin just before I went away for three weeks in December and we had a good conversation and it was like, right, come back after the season. Or sorry, come back in pre-season the 27th, I think, of December and be raring to go. And I said, yeah, no problem. And I went on holidays and two days into the holiday, I was rang off St. Pat's asking me would I be interested in going on loan. Um, obviously, Shelburne was interested in me. Would I be interested in going on loan? And they named three teams. And I'm like, hold on a minute. Two two days ago, I was in the plans for next year. And now you're asking me to go on loan. So clearly, I'm not in the plans. So I was like, yeah. I said, get rid of me if you want. I said, but I won't be going easy. So I didn't go easy, but... Obviously, Duff, then I spoke to Duff and, you know what I mean, I was actually looking back on it now. I kind of, I'm delighted with, with how it ended up being. Just, uh, Paddy, just to go back to St. Pat's for a second before we move on to Shells and, and Damien Duff. Um, just, just I was speaking with Peter earlier and I was just thinking kind of from your success at your Dundalk days, was that something, I know you had p- players like Robbie Benson and that there with you, um, possibly Shane Griffin is now with you at Shells as well, but you had those types of players who were winners at their clubs. Did you bring sort of a winning culture to that Pats team at that time? Because um, that was a fantastic Pats side and obviously you said he's went on to win and he's beat Bowes who were a really good side that year. I think that was the year they done well in Europe as well. Um, 
But like you, ha- you add that, you've got Chris Forrester and stuff like that there. I mean, you had a really, really good squad. I know it got broken up, but was it easy for you to go in there and kind of bring a winning culture? Or is that something that you do? Or is that how you lead? I've seen you on the pitch. You can lead quite well. Is that what you're like in the dressing room or, or from your own point of view? Yeah, I, I probably would kind of call myself like a leader, one of the older lads, one of the more experienced lads. Obviously, when I went into St. Pat's, I wasn't probably one of the older ones but again I'm, I'm probably one of the more experienced ones uh, as you said as you mentioned we had some unbelievable players they as you name chris forrest or robbie benson you know what i mean there's two and you could go on the whole probably we probably had 15 top players around this around this country there you know what i mean and that's you don't really see that at many clubs obviously you look at shamrock rover and that where they're established teams you don't see that kind of team i know stevie o'donnell as well got that team ready fair quickly um, but yeah I, th- I think I would probably go into it any change in the room kind of wouldn't phase me um, I'd go in and be myself and obviously I, I'd probably do more speaking on the field rather than off it um, you know I wouldn't be a one to kind of hype up a change in the room or go in and demand things kind of off lads in the change in the room you know like standards so on and so forth as kind of captains or experienced players would do but I'd kind of like to think that I bring it out and lead on the pitch um, without any armbands or that kind of stuff. I just think it comes naturally to me and obviously I've done pretty well with it, I think. Yeah, no, because I was only going to ask that because I am, and I kind of come to it in a sec, but it was Damien Duff, you know, the the fact that this, this, the Shells team is very young and I remember like watching a lot of games last year and I think he's touched on it himself saying you know there's games that Shells are winning this year that probably would have lost last year just down to not having the experience uh, of probably someone like yourself because when Lukey Byrne was getting injured or anything there wasn't too many other players that were experienced coming in and I, I do think Damien's done an unbelievable job with younger players in terms of bringing them in and developing you know uh, Gavin Malloy prime example of someone who looks almost like he's a veteran at this stage, but he's only a kid, you know, yeah. the way he plays. But uh like that I was just gonna say, do you do you bring your kind of um mentality uh to, to the Shells team as well then? Because I know you said there you're yeah, obviously I feel not like the, I do, yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, I feel like I definitely do because as you said, it's uh, a lot of younger a lot of younger lads. I think Lukey is the oldest and then there's me. Um so I don't think I've ever thing, felt that old in a changing room. Um but I would like to feel like I think I bring that quite experienced head there and probably calmness and as well again it's kind of how to win a game you know what I mean so sometimes obviously it's not it's not so pretty uh, it's not pretty on the other if you graft out that win if you graft out that win then you know what I mean it's kind of okay you do your video analysis on it and then it's forgotten about because you have the three points you know what I mean but as you said looking at shells probably last year they probably lost a lot of a lot more games that they probably shouldn't have you know but this year i think we're kind of getting more results now i wouldn't say i'm a big a big kind of um i wouldn't say i'm a big part of it but i'd like to feel like i do help on that side where i'd help that experience side where you where i help the lads see out a game kind of do the dirty stuff that needs to be done to win a game you know and it's i think it's pay, been paying off so far this year yeah just on on duffer himself um what's it been like with him because like i i, I watch him the last two the last two years now and i've seen how far the team has come on and i you know a lot of people have been critical about draws and stuff like that but a lot of teams have, have bigger budgets and stuff like that I, I just think for what players at his disposal he, he seems to be a really great coach i can't say that my like from the outside looking in because i only see what happens on a, on a match day but you've played under many managers we know what an unbelievable player he was what is he like as a coach yeah uh, Duffer, he's very good and um, himself and joey o'brien are jesus our top top drawer uh people as well and um, people as well as managers and i think that kind of goes a long way in kind of getting a team together is being kind of a good person you know what i mean where people are listening to you people respect you obviously everybody respects him because of who he is and obviously joey o'brien as well they they kind of have that respect that they kind of have that authority about him but 
when you kind of get no get to know them on a personal level, then you realise they're just 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 like us, you know. And and going to them as coaches, I think they work unbelievably well together. And you know, as you were talking about a young team, I don't think a lot of I don't I wouldn't say a lot of managers could get what they do get out of this young team. Um, just the drive that he has, the love he has for this game, it's it's unbelievable to work under and it kind of makes you have that mindset similar to his where you want to you want to do this for the club you want to do this for the win you, you know what i mean you love the game you love coming in training it's an enjoyable place enjoyable environment and you know what i mean i think that comes down to the top and you know what i mean obviously i think as you said i've worked under a lot of different managers top managers i think they're him and um, Joey O'Brien are definitely up there for me and you know what I mean I just hope probably in the future that they can stay stay at Shells and you know what I mean and they can do they can do remarkable things yeah and you seem quite settled there Um, you know you seem to be one of the one of the popular lads anyway within the group but I've seen that at St. Pat's with you as well but um, is that something that I think Shells are, are, are looking at trying to keep now? Obviously, there's investment in there now and trying to keep a good bulk of the lads. You're not going to keep everyone. Everyone knows that. It's, it is the League of Ireland, unfortunately. That's that's just the way the world works with that sort of stuff. But is is the aim now to kind of push for Europe, try and keep the bulk of the squad and then just improve year on year, on year really? Yeah, as you said, like obviously, there's no investors where kind of the, the, the power is not... It's not in my hands, you know. Yeah. Um, obviously, if there was interest elsewhere, then fine. Obviously, you sit down and speak. And but as you said, there's new owners now. It's kind of everybody is fighting for their place. Everybody, everybody's fighting for that contract. You know what I mean? It's not just me, but you're t- I'm talking about. I'm talking for twenty lads, you know. Um, so it's it's probably a little bit of a strange situation to be in coming to this end of the year. But as you said. If you want to build a team and go for Europe kind of year on year, then you have to keep that bulk what kind of you know what I mean, you have to keep that the glue that keeps the keeps the team together, you know what I mean? And then obviously blossom around that and add around that. So, you know what I mean? I, I'm not sure too sure what kind of the club are looking at kind of that way, but you know what I mean, you'll be hoping that they keep that bulk of lads because I can tell you I've been in dressing rooms and they're some of the best young lads that I've played with, you know what I mean? And as you said earlier about the likes of Gab Malloy, he's he I think he's like twenty years of age, Evan Caffrey, twenty years of age. For me, they they play like they're twenty eight, twenty nine years of age. You know what I mean? They speak like they're older, experienced lads and it that's hard to come by. Um to get that out of young lads and it'll only blossom them as players as they go on further on in their careers, you know what I mean? They can only make it can only get them better and I think Shells is a perfect environment for that. Yeah, well, I think that brings us on to the, the next phase. I think Peter has some questions uh, coming up for, for this week. So, Yeah, obviously, big game on um, on Friday, Paddy, against your former club. Would you say, you know, having played on both sides of the rivalry, would you say um, you'd feel it more going out on that pitch from, from the fans or just, just treat it as if it's any other game? Well, obviously, look, it's set up for a light game, to be honest with you. It's set up, look, Pats are going to try win the league and obviously we're pushing to get up as high as we can in the table. And, you know what I mean, if if it ended up trying to push for that European spot, then we're going to keep on trying pushing for it. Uh, Fans-wise, for me, like, look, I've got, <laughs> I don't know why, but I've got plenty of abuse of the Pats fans. And, you know what I mean, I'm sure if I left Shells, I'd probably get the same, but... Um, yeah, look, it's it, there's an excitement around the game, no doubt, because of what's at stake. You know what I mean? Obviously, we want to win, and um, they want to win. They've, I think, we've been beaten five times this year, and they've beaten us three times. You know, three one nils from three set pieces. It's obviously very disappointing to be beaten off the same team over and over. So hopefully, we can we can um, go out Friday and kind of return them the favour and go back and go beat them. Well, yeah, they have only been narrow victories, to be fair. Like, and Shells, look, you're only four points off off uh, the European spots. Do you think there's kind of a, a confidence around the squad at the moment that you could, you know, steal one of them European spots from one of the, the top four at the moment? Yeah, as you said, look, they're narrow victories, but them victories, 
you know what I mean? That's kind of nine points dropped for us and nine points gained for them uh, when you look at it that way. Uh, and that's, look, that's what good teams do. They go win the game and, you know what I mean, when, when it's in the... When it's in the medal and pot, that team that strikes first and just three times they've struck first, first, I think they're about 10 or 12 points ahead of us and they've got nine points from us, you know what I mean? So it's obviously very disappointing from our point of view. Um, but yeah, look, if you go into, uh, obviously us, it's it's a hard one to, to go up because you look at the other teams where their budgets, their, their the players that they have, the experience they have, I don't think we should be kind of where we are, to be honest with you. And I don't think we should be fighting for for European spots. But as I said, we've got a young, hungry group here and it's driven from the manager, or driven from the coaches that we have here. Then why not why not have confidence? We've been doing well this year. We've got we've picked up some unbelievable results and we're still there or thereabouts. So why not have confidence going into Friday and going into the last eight games and hopefully getting them um, Getting up to that European spot, it's there for us. It's up to us. We play, we play all the teams up near us. So it's up to us to go and beat them. Do you, just on that, Paddy, do you think it's it's easier to be the one you know chasing the people ahead of you? Because like, you, obviously the pressure's on those to not slip up as much. Yeah, yeah it it is, but you'd probably prefer to be up there <laughs> by the end yeah, of the season for probably, sure. Yeah, yeah, um, but look. It's, we don't kind of have much pressure because, look, you're going to, as you said, you went to Pats on Friday, they're probably expected to beat us. But, you know what I mean? We have a mindset where they're not going to beat us, you know what I mean? But obviously, it, don't, it, does, it all doesn't, um, it's not as easy as easier said than done. But, um, yeah, look, you prefer to be up there. The higher you are, the better it is, you know. But then again, we just were down. There's nobody talking about shells. There's nobody talking about shells getting Europe. You know, you see, you see, um, I see the League of Ireland post and about the top four clash, uh, the European spots, and they're not even mentioning shells, you know. So it's kind of like, look, we're we're there, we're just hovering around, but for us, we're we're driven, we're focused, and we're hungry to go win every Friday and hopefully get us up that table and get people talking about us the way we should, the way they should be. I think that sort of stuff does the manager's team talk for him. Yeah, it is. It's like. I wouldn't say this. It's a kind of disrespect, you know what I mean? It's like, hold on a second, we're gone ahead of Dundalk at the minute. We're four points off Bowes, but yet every, everybody's talking about Bowes and, you know, it's 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 mind-boggling at the minute, like, for me, to be honest with you, where it's like, it's not like we're 10 points behind him where we can't catch him. It's like, you're there, you're in the middle of it, you know what I mean? It's But as you said, they have the names, they have the players, they have the experience they have the budget to be spoken about to be shown live and whatever so that's where kind of it probably helps us it drives us and it's kind of an easy motivation yeah just to finish on just on, on this season as a whole i suppose i know there's um games to the left is but would you class this season as a success um considering you, you mentioned it kind of already about shells the budget and the players a lot of those players are, are young inexperienced players um do you think shells have maybe overachieved a little bit you probably won't look at it that way but um consider at the start of the season maybe yeah possibly uh possibly yeah um of overachieving where people probably looked at us kind of probably at the start as a team that probably could be fighting for relegation um you know, as you said, you look at the team, look at the squad depth, look at the players. Uh, we don't have these big high names, these players that everybody, you know what I mean, the highlight of the league where people, when you look at, we say St. Pat's, for instance, they talk about Chris Forrest or, you know what I mean, uh, they have names, players, Mulraney, you know, where we don't, we didn't at the start of the season have these players. Obviously, the likes of um, Jack Moylan. Jack, Jack Moylan, you have Gab Malloy. Now these people are talking about them, and rightly so, because obviously they've not achieved what these other players around the league have achieved and done. But let me tell you, in time, you'll be talking about these players. Um, so, yeah, as you said, I, I think we could be probably overachieving, but when you're in the middle of it, like I am, in training every day, working with these lads, working with the manager, working with Joey, then... I want more from it. You know what I mean. I want. I want more. I want. I want the players to 
to know that, you know what I mean? And I think we do know that and we're trying, we try and try. And we're a team just, as you said, it's just that little barrier we need to go over to be one of them top teams. And as you said, we have eight games left to, to go that, go beyond that little barrier and hopefully we can do it and then just kick on from there. I just I heard uh, a podcast the other day. Connor Cody was talking about uh, one of the uh, coaches that was working with Pep coming in from um, Man City, and he's learning so much. And he's you know, he's the other side of thirty now, um, and he thought that he kind of had had learned just on Joey and Damien. Is is there stuff that you've learned this year? That you just kind of were like, well, you know, I never even thought of that. Yeah, a million percent. Uh, I've learned a lot from, to be honest with you, it's, especially. Joey, obviously, being a defender, I've learned little, little things, little things, but big, minor tweaks, a big yeah. effect on these little things. Minor things to my game, to my positioning, to just there's tiny little things that me I've never heard before, and you know what I mean. It's, he blows me mind some days, what with the information he gives, but it's it's incredible the information that he has, and to be fair to Joey and. The gaffer, the two of them work unbelievably well, and as you can see, probably every Friday night, the Shells team, obviously not every Friday night because you have good games and bad games, but under them too, I think it's mostly uh, good games, hard working, and you know it's it's a, a lot of credit deserved, obviously for them too, but they get the best out of the players that they have, and it's a credit to them. I must say I really enjoyed the football and the style of play as well. Um, so to be able to kind of mix all those things in and to be nasty as well, I think I think that's something you mentioned as well. I, I think that probably comes from from Joey as well. I don't know. I I played a game. I think you were you might have been on the sideline for that. Uh, the the pride. Oh, I did. Yeah, I was there. I was yeah, there. there was killings in that in that game, <laughs> but uh, and that was only a friendly game, a charity game. I was look. I was calling for a backup for a few. Weeks. Not for me. I was the referee that day. <laughs> and you <laughs> you were the instigator that blown that never whistle. never that was Keith McDerby yeah, he was worse <laughs> the commercial director but uh, Paddy listen um, we won't keep you any longer I just want to say a huge thanks for, for jumping on that was some great insight uh, and uh, uh, we would love to have you on again sometime soon Um You've got... Um... Hopefully uh, next time I'll have my camera back normal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't worry about it too much because we can still hear you. So fair play to you. Listen, uh, best of luck on Friday. I'll be hoping for a Shells win. Peter will probably be hoping for a Pats win. I know what you'll be hoping for. <laughs> but, Good uh, lad. Uh, thanks very much, lads, for having us on anyway. No problem. Thank you. Listen, yeah, thanks, uh, we'll see you soon and uh, take care. Yeah, thank you. Right, and uh, once again, thanks to Paddy for coming on. But of course, we have to move on to this week's fixtures now. Oh, just uh, before we G do, Peter, I do think it's interesting, some of the stuff that you said. I do think we, sh we should probably react to that because some of the stuff he said about Clancy and some of the stuff he said about Duffer, I was very interesting to kind of hear. I know you said before, um, to me, is that, you know, Pats fans kind of felt as though he left uh, on bad terms, but you heard from the horse's mouth there that it was kind of out of control yeah i think a lot of pats fans at the time kind of when paddy left almost felt as if he, he forced his way out of the club uh there was like kind of i know he didn't get his game time towards the end and as he was saying his injury didn't go on as long as people probably thought it did and um, i know he only got about three or four games last season towards the end for pats so it is interesting to hear from from paddy's perspective of you know almost feeling let down by the game time and then the, the question of a loan being brought up and just saying, you know, I think it's time for me to, to move. Yeah, especially a loan so, two days after meeting the manager to to try and get something sorted. I mean, I like yeah. Tim Clancy. I, I've met him numerous times, a good guy. But uh, this is football and, and the discussions they have are totally different to the discussions that we have with them. But uh, yeah, so I, I think it was interesting that he cleared that up. And then obviously the stuff he was saying about some of the younger lads at Shelburne, like the likes of Gavin Malloy, Evan Caffrey, Jack Moylan, these players who he seems to rate really really highly and considering he's played at the top level of Irish football for years now um Dundalk played in one of the best sides the that this country's ever seen I would say the Stephen Kenny side so for him to be coming out and saying stuff like that I think that's um speaks volumes about those players yeah nothing but high praise it seemed for, uh, from Paddy anyway towards them lads and obviously then saying you know 
the whole thing of shells kind of almost flying under the radar it seems you know he's in like a lot of the clubs you're looking like the lights of pats rovers bows who are being you know talked about in this uh in this title race and shells are kind of almost being left out of even though they're only four points off the european spaces they're only four points behind the uh the chasing pack so it was kind of it was interesting to hear from you know his perspective of saying you know a team that you wouldn't expect to be kind of pushing or the media almost doesn't expect to be pushing aren't even that far off the paces yeah but i i like the the, the motivation that he carries from that i, I like that about a player mm-hmm. who um you know it, it's us against the world type mentality i think you need to have that at, at elite level um but yeah look he's he's obviously focused on on this week's results or this week's fixtures sorry um, so we might as well crack on with the fixtures before we finish up and uh, have a look at who's playing who and, and what we think the, the results are going to be. Yeah, apologies. I was almost racing into them too quick. I was that excited. But yeah, two big Dublin derbies. Uh, Shamrock Rovers, of course, welcome their uh, their longtime rivals, Bohemians, to Tallah Stadium. Uh, Shelburne as well, welcome St. Pat's, uh, another big rivalry there. Our Meanwhile, Derby. Derry, our Derby, Derby rivalry. Our Derby. Our derby, yeah, yeah, the, the red Dublin derby, or some people call it the, the second Dublin derby, but I don't like that because it, it downplays quite a big game yeah. for, for both sets of fans. Um, the Candy Stripes, of course, travel at Derry City, travel to Dundalk uh, to play at uh, Oriel Park. That's a bit of a derby yeah. as well, all the players that kind of gone between the two teams, but yeah, sorry, go on. The El Plastico, the, the plastic pitch <laughs> derby, you know? <laughs> yeah. So that, that'd be a big game, obviously, um, with the title race and Europe. Uh, Cork and Sligo, once again, another game, in, another massive game in terms of the battle to stay out of the playoff spots. I think this is, as I said before, Cork's last chance to escape from that or kind of make a push to get out of it. I, looking at the rest of the fixtures, I can't really see any, any other games that they're, they're going to get something out of. And then draw to have UCD which is a game once again you'd expect them to win yeah um i suppose <clears throat> thinking about them now I, I you know i i can't see that another than a draw and in the double derby because rovers really need a result there um both the pressure isn't really on them as much but they're firing in goals at the moment afalabi's on fire still um I so i think say, yeah yeah rovers will be beyond head edge about him <laughs> Um, but they'll be hoping to keep him quiet, and then <clears throat> yeah, shells and pats that's a tough one to call. We obviously spoke to Pat, Paddy there, and he was talking about you know, pats have won three times, one nil, um, seem to have the the upper hand on shells, whatever way uh, that, that's been. So I think shells will be looking and probably more determined now after the three uh defeats. I think it was three defeats out of five, he said all season were came from pats, so um, they'll be looking mm. to turn that one over. Um, so I could see that one being a, re- a really tight game as well. Again, and yeah, uh, what was the other one there? You said Cork and uh, Cork Sligo. Cork and Sligo. Yeah, well, that could be interesting because if Sligo win that, and then they're kind of getting further away from from the relegation uh, zone. Or if Cork win that, then like you know that puts them in a really good position to to try and maybe go on a bit of a run. Um, that's the thing with the league, though. It's like you you can you can go on a run so easily. Like you get a couple of results, and all of a sudden the the table's not looking as as grim, you know. Um, what was the other game then? Uh, you had there on uh, Derry and Dundalk. That's going to be a cracker. That those games are always quite good. Um, yeah, I couldn't pick a winner between go. that at the moment. I, I'm not doing that to sit on the fence. I just I, I want to give a prediction and um, a prediction of scores, but I just I simply just can't. I just think it's too hard to do. <laughs> um, it's going to sound like I'm sitting on the fence, but I'm really not. Um, but I could see, I could see Derry winning that one. So Dundalk fans won't like that. But uh, yeah, and then uh, Drogheda play. Who was the the last? Uh, UCD. UCD. Yeah. Oh, well, uh, the I think if uh, if Drogheda win that, I think they're they're pretty much there's yeah they're, they're that's common draw, aren't they? Almost guaranteed at that point. Yeah, I could see. I I can't. I think Kevin Doherty will be urging the lads. You know, let's get this result, and and we can have a bit of breathing space there. So yeah, I, I, they're my predictions without predicting <laughs> results. What about yeah, you? Yeah, looking at the shell as a Pats fan, looking at the shells game does does scare me a bit because obviously, as you said, we've gone 
three wins over Shells this season. All of them have been one nil. You you know narrow victories. Is Duffer going to be going out to say you know I know Shells are pushing for Europe, but it, it, he'd be kind of going out to say look at lads, you know the Pats you know have may have not made a fool out of you, but have kind of like shown you up three times this season. Just go out there, you know, get something out of this game, kind of take away from their title race in terms of. You know, the rivalry might, and you might kind of feed into that. I don't know if the players play into the rivalry as much as, you know, the Rovers Dundalk rivalry, but it'll definitely be something that Duffer will be saying in the changing room. And as you said, like Afalabi, I'd actually be a bit afraid for Rovers because I was watching the Rovers Dundalk game there the other night. They were very slow at the back. Um, Dundalk were consistently getting runs in behind. And Rovers only didn't concede because Martin missed a goal that he realistically should have scored. So with Bo, the amount of chances they're creating, how slow Rovers seem to be defensively, is Afalabi going to cause them a lot of trouble? I think he might. Um, and then Dundalk, Derry, as you said, that could realistically go either way. Uh, I'd fancy Dundalk just because their home record, especially against Derry, seems to be fa- is fairly strong. So I will be back in them. And then Cork, Sligo. I've, I've kind of given up and back in Cork and games to be honest. They, they, they just any time you give Cork a bit of hope, they just seem to throw it away. Um, they're almost destined to, to steamroll or steam towards that playoff spot. And draw the UCD. Uh, UCD have just been part of season, so I say that should be a handy win for draw. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I don't think um, we're in too much of a disagreement in terms of uh, the the fixtures themselves, but. Uh, yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. That's been our, our League of Ireland show. We had a great chat with, with Paddy Barrett, which was the main feature this week, and we're going to hope to try and get uh, more players. But if you think there is a way to make this podcast better, let us know in the comments, and let us know what you thought of the podcast as well in the comments um, too. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out Peter as well. He's pretty big on TikTok with at everything LOI. It's also on Instagram as well. Eva, on anything else? You know, YouTube too as well. Indeed. That was, yeah, that was. So even he didn't know, but I knew. <laughs> I'm very out of the loop at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, as I said, at Everything LOI, check that out as well. We'll speak to you all soon. Thanks very much for watching and take care. Have a nice week.